joining me from her home in Glorieta, New Mexico, Melissa Segura. Thank you so much, Melissa, for joining us. There's so many things to unpack with your story. We have a member of our virtual audience who just told me she's a DJ in Illinois, lost her job because of COVID. And I said, you know, you didn't do anything to lose that job, but the reboot in the next chapter, be ready for it. Something good is coming. You were with Sports Illustrated for a very long time, and you landed the mm -hmm. job with BuzzFeed after the setback at Sports Illustrated. You'd lost your job. I lost my job. That's right. And I remember feeling like I didn't know what I was going to do. Um, this was a job that at Sports Illustrated, I was going to World Series. I was, you know, hanging out and flying around with world-class athletes and it had become so much my identity. And so when I was shown the door, not by my own choosing, I didn't know what I was going to do. There were so many bathroom floor moments. And then like that, I was at a stoplight one day. I was scrolling through Twitter. It was a red light, so don't worry about the traffic behind me. But um, I was I was scrolling through Twitter and I saw an opportunity where they needed an investigative reporter at BuzzFeed. And I thought, hey, why not? I've had this idea in the back of my head for a long time. Let's see if there's something that can be done. And I sort of dusted myself off the ground and and just tried, never thinking that I would actually get the fellowship and the opportunity to report the story. You got the job at BuzzFeed. The thing that was in the back of your mind was a story that you'd come across about a football player who'd been convicted of murder and, and sent to prison. And you started investigating the story. Many others, I'm sure, had heard the story. How did you, first of all, find the leads that led to this big, I mean, you blew the roof off with this story. Um, it actually started as when I was a sports reporter and I had gotten a tip from the director of the California Innocence Project. He was just talking about um, a lot of uh, the way that plea bargaining works and that he had this very famous football player who was destined for NFL greatness. And um, all of a sudden, a rape conviction had derailed his career. And he said, oh, and by the way, I mean, I, I had a client back in Illinois and she had done a plea bargain and she got the plea, but she didn't get the bargain, mm. meaning that she had pled guilty, but was still sentenced to death. Mm. And he said, you know, she didn't do this crime. And I've been looking at it for over 20 years. And so to me, the question that came into my mind was what in the world would convince somebody to work on something for 20 years on their own time and on their own expense. And it turned out that the woman at the heart of, um, of his investigation was Detective Ronaldo Guevara, and it just led, you know, was like an onion with layers and layers and layers. From Chicago, Illinois, Mary Rodriguez, Robert Almodovar, um, still with us, Melissa, <clears throat> excuse me, Robert, you know, watching you walk out of there, I'm sure a lot of reporters had covered your story and you may have even reached out. You never, <sighs> Could you have ever imagined that this report after all those years would be the difference maker? No, I didn't. I mean, just, just seeing it now, it's just still emotional, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, I heard, I heard making this report and bringing it to the light, it helps a lot. It helped not just me, but other people who was running convicted. I mean, it was just, I didn't know it was going to be this big <laughs> and, uh, it was just amazing, and I thank her so much for what she did. Because, you know, she did a lot. You know, her taking her time to do this story and just, it, 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 it's just as amazing. Mary, I see you. This is like your son, and your relationship with Robert is, is a bond. You yes, said Melissa is. listened. She heard you, and she listened. And that seems like such a simple thing. And as a reporter, that's what we're supposed to do. But we know that doesn't always happen. What does she mean to you and your family? Well, she means a lot to us. Um, you know, like you said, we fought for 23 years and we talked to whoever would listen to us. Yeah. And when Melissa came in and did our interview, I said, finally, oh. someone's listening. I felt it. You know, you can feel it. And she changed our lives. She gave, helped us free our nephew. And I would be internally grateful to her. She's like a family to us now. She would always be a part of us, always. Melissa, you mentioned after losing that job at Sports Illustrated, having those bathroom floor moments. I know them where you're, you're, you're saying, what's next? Why me? 
you know, the bank account is getting smaller and the options for a woman in this business are even smaller. A woman of a certain age, I know that very much so. At the end of the day, the pain and the rejection you felt, I'm sure in some ways it was all worth it. Absolutely. You know, I think I had told one of your producers that if tomorrow I walked out in the street and got hit by a truck, that I would have felt like my life had meant something. Mm. Uh, but something to say now is, is that I know that I, you know, people will say, oh, you, have to, you know, you saved all these people. But it misses an important point is, is that I was sort of in, like, you know, in my own shame and my own self doubt. And by them allowing me to tell their story, they saved me too. Oh, they saved you too. Well, thank you for sharing your story, Mary, Robert, Melissa. An incredible journey just through a chance. And I guess it's a chance encounter. I guess that's what you would describe it. I call it destiny. You were destined to do that story. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.